Let's go to Stephen from Washington. Stephen from Washington, uh, an on again, off again website member. Stephen, I think is fair to say. Fair to say, David. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, this is a uh, Ronald Reagan. I'm aware. I feel like I was maybe being shadow banned because of my use of the the name Reagan, and you made it clear that you do not like nicknames. Oh, uh, no, you were not shadow banned. No, 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 no. By no means. I mean, we. I know you as Reagan. So that would not have gotten you disqualified. But sometimes, you know, people don't get called on. Different things can happen. All right, let's talk dad stuff. Does D-man. Sam know you're calling in, first of all? What's that? Does Sam know you're calling in? I mean, I always have to report back to my handlers. So okay, fair. He, he doesn't know yet, but he, you know, I'm going to have to send him a message about this. No and, problem. Uh, I just want to make sure it's not going behind his back. All right, talk to me about dad stuff. Yeah, well, no, I mean, I want to hear from you. I mean, what's been good? What's the, you know, what's what's the good? What's the bad? Let, let's hear it. The people want to know. Well, I was definitely, you know, I talked about how in preparation I got like a couple diapers and it turns out you need like way more than that. <laughs> you had like five. Yeah I, yeah, I was like five diapers mm-hmm. should be good for the first few months and it did not mm-hmm. work out that way. So that was difficult. Um, no, listen, I mean, honestly, the thing that's been the most difficult is constant panic over like, is the baby alive sort of stuff? You know, this is yeah. our first one. The first night home from the hospital, uh, we decided to do shifts and the whole thing was like, all right, let me take the 9 p.m. shift. Um, NBA playoffs were going on. There was a late game. I was like, I'll stay up and then I'll try to push it till like 2 a.m. And then we'll switch for a two to seven shift and it'll be great. And at 1020, my daughter gagged. I just heard coming out of the bassinet. Oh. And immediately I'm up and, you know, she had some amniotic fluid in the lungs left over, which is common after a C-section. And I'm running around with this baby and my girlfriend wakes up and it's 2 a.m. We're on the phone with the pediatrician. And then it's just we're just up, you know, we're like basically running a vigil. Yeah, for sure. I remember laying there after our daughter was born and there was this, I'd take, you know, I'd gone through all the classes and stuff. Yep. This being overwhelmed with this feeling of like, I don't even know how to keep this thing alive. Like, what do you, I mean, obviously it's got to eat, yep. um, but like, what are the other? <laughs> and it's <laughs> crazy with the eating where it's like, we'll yeah. give her food and the next day she wants more food. Yeah. That, that does not stop. It's I mean, crazy it hasn't for us, but it's pretty crazy. Is there anything that you, um, that you feel like you've, I mean, other than, than the diaper thing, what else you learned about, parenting do you find your do you find you're more i i find that i'm much more forgiving of parents than i was as a very judgmental uh you know non-parent adult yeah not- maybe to some degree but at the same time like w- i in some cases i'm more judgmental with certain things where like i think on on balance i'm right that i'm more i'm more forgiving of stuff that I saw with other parents. But one of the things I have learned is behind every annoying kid, there's often one or more annoying parents that seems to hold quite accurate. Um, Mm. But beyond that, no, I mean, there's certain things where like, listen, like we just traveled, right? We did this road trip up to Montreal, which is like very, very far with 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 stops for baby changing and feeding and everything from New York. It's like it's many, many hours. And like, I get why people might just say I can't handle traveling. I just can't do it. it we're, we're just we're just staying home. But I'm like, listen, it was tough, but it was so worth it. So I, I I'm i like, no, no, those parents who just stay home, I would encourage them to do the travel. Yeah, but David, I mean, to be honest, you're kind of in a sweet spot for traveling because You've got one of those non-mobile sleep all day babies. I know. Everybody always everybody so, always says at this particular age you're able to do what you're able to do. And I'm I, that, I'm totally open to that. Let's wait and see how things go and then I will eat my hat if it changes. What are, what are the other things that you are that you are more judgmental about other parents on right now? Um 
You know, I, I, I don't know. I, there's nothing that I'm I, I'm kind of kidding about being more judgmental. But I think that now having been in the trenches with a few of these things, a lot of the things aren't that bad. Like for and I'm sure it depends on the baby. But like, for example, figuring out some of the sleep stuff, like I read a couple books on it and like, you know, things go haywire. But then you adjust and you iterate and you, you develop a system. And I think sometimes there's like a lot of people just have a lack of information where like I really focused in on like, here's the five things that are important to me. Let me really research and be prepared for these things. And when you're prepared, things go way, way better. So where are we at on number two? Where are we at on where in what sense? I mean, is it on the table? Is it totally off the table? Uh, it, what do you mean? You like, know, where wait, are we changing the diapers? What do you mean on the table? I'm talking about baby number two, David. Oh, I thought you meant like number when you when you have to change a number two diaper. <laughs> no, 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 there is no discussion of baby number two. two. There is no discussion of baby number two. OK, is this a point of contention? I mean, is it, it sounds like maybe. No, not it's, right it's now. It's not being this. Well, it's just not being discussed. Or... That's exactly right. It's not being discussed. It's like, how do, how is it even legal to have more than one is what's being discussed right now? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. OK, that makes sense. Hey, let me add, can I ask you a question? Sure. Well, you've been asking questions one... all along. I know I've got one more question for you. Sure. I'll, I'll turn to the to the boring stuff. OK, sure. So um, this is my Thomas Friedman uh, corner. OK, OK. So I'm going to sh share an anecdote with you. Uh, I was uh, talking to the lady who cuts our hair for my wife and I. Okay. And she's she's from Missouri. She seems sort of like vaguely socially liberal, but not super into politics. But I okay. asked her about the Dobbs decision. This is like right after Dobbs. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, she sounded like uh, David Pakman. She knew all the details. She she knew about the uh, proposed constitutional change in Kansas. She knew about this and that. And she was like. You know, obviously, it's something that is very important to her. And then she kind of circled around to like uh, something that I hear a lot, which is like both sides are terrible, mm. right? And I think this is sort of a default for people who find politics like boring or confusing or maybe not that interesting. And I'm wondering, you know, if you're just in a casual conversation with someone, you don't want to get like into a full on debate what you would do, what your strategy is for sort of like gently pointing out that like, yeah, there's, there's like shenanigans on both sides to be sure, but you know, there's yeah, a my approach when people, I call that like enlightened centrism. Usually what I will say is, can you give me examples of issues where both sides are approaching an, an issue in a way that is essentially the same, like not that they have the same position, but that they're equivalent. And then they people will often struggle because it's like, you know, the left wants abortions to be safe and wants to reduce the demand with same with with comprehensive sex education and access, you know, all these different things. And the right's like ban it, you know, and so very quickly people start to realize it's really not the same on both sides. It's actually quite different, but it takes a little while to start going through that. But that's been my approach. Yeah. Hey, people in the chat are saying I'm trolling you, but I'm I'm not. I love you, David. Um, thanks all for right. all you do. Uh, the P tape is real. And uh, good luck with uh, with your baby. All right. Thank you. There is Stephen uh, Ronald Reagan from Washington.